African regional banks continue to extend their presence on the continent. The most recent acquisition by Nigeria's Guarantee Trust Bank, that of Kenya's FINA Bank, to extend their profits into the East African region, has added a new dimension to the integration of African banks. So for more on this and, of course, what's next on the acquisition front when we're looking at regional banks on the continent, Suresh Chai, to Sector Director of Banks and DFIs at RMB. Thanks for joining us, Suresh. Thanks, so you, of course, have been spending some time in East Africa looking at the uh, banks uh, across, uh, across East Africa right now and the fact that you can go to Kenya and you see the same brands in uh, East African countries like South Sudan, even Rwanda, Tanzania, as you'll see in Kenya right now. So East African banks have already extended into the rest of the, right. of the region. Absolutely. I think we've seen East Africa, uh, I think not so, well, not so long time ago, you and I spoke about East African banks going into South Sudan, which was virgin territory at that stage. And I think they've They've done a great job of embedding uh, themselves as a franchise. KCB, for example, is the largest franchise in South Sudan at the moment. But what we're also now seeing is a lot of the West African banks as part of their regional expansion ambitions are now moving into East Africa mm -hmm. as a block. And with, I think with GT Bank acquiring a 70% stake in FINA Bank will allow them a footprint into at least three countries, um, you know, as opposed to starting up sort of greenfield operations in those particular countries. Mm -hmm. What's very, very important is to link up intra-regional flows and what's been happening on that front, Sam, with the way banks have been expanding in sub-Saharan Africa. As you know, you know, intra-regional flows as, as Africa as a block is one of the lowest in the world. Only 12% of what Africa produces is actually traded intra-regionally, mm -hmm. which is very, very low compared to the EU and, and the US at, and Asia at close on to 50 or 60%. So there's so much of opportunities. And I think this regionalization of banks, I think, are preparing themselves in terms of footprint to gear themselves up to open up these regional, intra-regional flows. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, we just spoke earlier about Actus and this emerging middle market. I think banks are also starting to expand to take advantage of this emerging middle class that's you know in, in some of the key strategic countries and high growth areas. And of course not wanting to their growth just to be limited, for example in GT Bank's case, just to Nigeria or just to West Africa when they see a huge potential in uh, the, on, in Kenya. And what is interesting more broadly in East Africa is they said to be wanting to get exposure to the oil and gas sector given experience in West Africa. So that's where you see expertise on the West African front coming yeah. to East Africa. And it's a very, very good point you make because I think it points to the fact that regional banks are moving into countries uh, and into territories and markets that they're most comfortable at. So, mm -hmm. for example, you know, within an East Africa block, Kenyan banks will move first because, you know, banks west of Africa will probably not know the territory as well. Um, most importantly, what you're seeing is also is, you know, banks want to continually diversify their risks and create granularity in their portfolio because there is a key risk of just remaining in one country and work with competition in that country. You reach a point of saturation where you need to diversify your earnings. And I think you know, banks in West Africa realize that they need to continue to diversify their earnings as they continue to grow their own in their own home countries as well. Why does an acquisition of a brand make uh, potentially more sense than uh, organic growth into that market? Well, you know, starting with Greenfield operation, one is very, very expensive, and two, it takes a long time. So, w for example, the recent GT acquisition of FINA Bank provides them with a footprint in three key African countries um, and a branch network immediately to take advantage of the retail bank network. So, But it's not the strongest brand. You're not buying into the strongest brand uh, with, you know, broad market share like the likes of KCB and the market leaders, equity and, you know, even the CFC Sandex. True, Sam, but here's the point. A big bank a big, uh, or a big brand can enable and grow their footprint quite quite easily by utilizing a parent balance sheet to gain market share in a country. Mm -hmm. So you don't necessarily need a large footprint, especially if you've got a very, very large balance sheet to, 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 to enter a market, particularly in corporate and investment banking or into some larger infrastructure projects. So whilst the in-country presence you may not be able to fund in-country, you could use your balance sheet to significantly grow your market share. Mm -hmm. So let's see how uh, that tactic works out for them. But what about uh, other banks that have integrated or have uh, made acquisitions across the continent? I mean, how, how are those mergers panning out for them? Well, I think it's been, it's been mixed. If you just look at, at, at KCB, I think they've been very, very successful at growing the East Africa franchise. I think UBA probably are, st are now only starting to see the fruit of, of, of their, their very, very quick uh, 
and diversified expansion because it's been on the back of regional, intra-regional trade flows, which hasn't been growing at such a rapid rate. Uh, I think Ecobank have, have been doing quite well in terms of, of their sub-Saharan African footprint as far as it's concerned. But most regional banks are taking a, a little bit of a medium to long-term view and are not expecting some mega returns in the short term whilst they build their footprint. So it's mm -hmm. a very much a longer term play. Mm -hmm. It's putting, uh, putting money down now for, of course, longer term returns there. So what is next on the acquisition front? If we had to speculate, um, are there any banks that you see potentially or you see any M&A activity in, in particular? in the specific territories right now? Well, I see, I, I see the, the East African uh, banks continually to continue to expand. What we are going to see is probably new brands wanting to expand in countries where existing East African banks already are. Mm -hmm. So I, I, it will come to me as no surprise to see more Nigerian banks now making a foray into the rest of Sub-Saharan Africa, as their other counterparts have been. I, I envisage that you probably would see a lot of East African banks now looking at West Africa. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so we, I, I expect that we will probably see more activity to the point that there is going to be a bit of saturation in, in these particular markets. But I think we are a bit far away from, from that. A Africa has continued to expand at above 5%. And so long as intra-regional flows are continuing to grow and there's a room for expansion in terms of, of business, we will continue to see regional banks expanding. Mm -hmm. The question mark is also around the valuations um, and of course what uh, the target companies are demanding right now and I'm not going to get into first round story and let you comment on that being of course the uh, parent company but um, ultimately it's been a battle for first round to get into West Africa to date and of course the question mark is around are companies a little bit greedy are some companies a little too conservative what are your thoughts on the valuations that we're going to see when it comes to bank acquisitions? Well, I think, you know, valuations are always, you know, uh, uh, arrived at utilizing various, you know, ingredients and components of, of valuation. And I think valuations largely derive of what a willing buyer is prepared to pay to a willing seller. Um, if you just look at, at, at the regional bank expansion, I, I, would, I would say that the, the valuations are acceptable. And also, depending on how long-term banks are prepared to look at it and mm -hmm. where they're seeing the value at, mm -hmm. uh, they're they going to be prepared to pay for it. Does it uh, doesn't make sense to pay up, though, even if you think right now it looks a little bit more pricey? Does it make sense just to pay up for the bricks and mortar and, of course, their banking license? Yeah. Well, it's all about protecting shareholders' value and what shareholders are mandating you to do. You know, ultimately, banks will be taking a much more longer-term view and also will be mandated by their shareholders to saying, we prepare to go in the longer term. We believe that the long-term strategic imperative should be in these particular strategic countries. And, and, and banks would probably pay the valuations that are requested. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in some cases, you know, many banks would look at retaining shareholders or wanting to retain shareholders' valuation and go greenfields. Um, and I think this is a strategic choice that banks will be making in the future.